Here we go. Ariel, would you call the roll, please? Alan Langeville. Here. J.R. Huddleston. Here. Here. Johnson. Here. Bill Here. Travis Orbach. Here. Larry Pratt. Here. Gary Selkamp. Here. Linda Barber. Here. Would you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Member Council, if you have a conflict of interest, please let uh, the rest of the council know before you vote. Need a motion to approve an amended agenda. In the first item, uh, we're going to amend the current claims to a new total of $696,801.50. And Ariel, if you'll keep me honest on this, uh, that change, that increase comes from two different uh, changes to the current claims. One is an addition that Ariel handed out to you, the uh, invoice for Atlas Exteriors increases the current claims by $32,100. The other change is on page 18, and it's for Houston Law Office. That total uh, is reduced by $18.88 for a new total of $5,051.37. <coughs> so the decrease in Houston Law Office uh, and the increase from the Atlas Exteriors brings us to the new total of $696,801.50. I make a motion to, I'm sorry. Got one more, please, hang on. Um, and I'd like to add, and we'll see if it stays on the agenda, but I'd like to add a new business item, a uh, new business item I, for a poker run from the American Legion on August 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, at the American Legion, and they'll be selling 50-50 raffle tickets for Toys for Kids fundraiser. And council, if you remember um, any raffles, um, you have to be aware of those and approve those. So uh, this was just brought to me before the meeting. Uh, the individual who brought this one is supposed to be bringing copies for the rest of you folks. Uh, so we'll see how that happens. But um, I'd like to at least get a placeholder for that uh, new business item. So uh, changing the current claims, increasing it to $696,801.50 and adding a new business item I for a poker run. I apologize, thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve an amended agenda changing current claims from $664,720.38 to $696,801.50. That comes from adding 32,100 from Atlas Exterior that we got the invoice this evening. And on page 18, uh, Houston <coughs> Law Office reduces $18.88 for a new total of $5,051.37. Also adding item I, a poker run uh, from the American Legion, uh, a request to sell 50-50 raffle tickets. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Um, if I can get a motion to approve the minutes from the July 15th council meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes from the July 15th council meeting. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Uh, and then if I can get a motion to approve the minutes from the July 30th and August 1st budget meetings. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes from the July 30th and August 1st budget planning meetings. Second. 
Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve the bills in between? I'll make a motion to approve the bills in between for $237,496.94. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Mallory, is that you in the back? You could bring the copies up, please. We'll get them to the council. Get a motion to approve an amended current claims. Make a motion to approve the amended current claims of six hundred ninety-six thousand eight hundred one dollars and fifty cents. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> Opposed. The motion passes. And our final claim. Can I get a motion to approve the Wells Fargo credit card claims? I make a motion to approve the Wells Fargo credit card claims of $6,485.16. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. All right, so we come to our communications from the public. Do we have anybody that would like to address the council? So if you remember, come on down, give us your name and address. Uh, Valerie Henry, 302 South 19th Street. And uh, you, you have five I minutes? Power Coalition. Um, every, according to South Dakota law, if you sell any raffle tickets, you have to just give notice to the city or the, and the county when you're going to do it. And we've done it for, I think, six years now. Every year we, well, we do it several times throughout the year. We have fundraisers for the Toys for Kids program. And August 17th, we'll have a poker run, and they sell 50-50 tickets at the poker run, where 50% of the proceeds go to Toys for Kids, and then whoever wins the raffle gets the other 50%. Okay. Council, any questions? So, and that's what I was telling my, my partner at the last minute we didn't hear right, so I apologize. I sent a clean copy so you guys have one part that's missing on there, but all I have to do is technically give you notice, but I always like to give you written notice too, so my apologies. Thank yep. you. Thanks, Valerie. Thanks, Valerie. Uh, Valerie, if you can hang on. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, Certainly appreciate you and the American Legion doing this. Thank you for that. Um, just need to give you a gentle reminder that um, you need to have these here before five minutes before the meeting. Oh, yes, yes, yes. These these are part of the public packets, so there's maybe somebody in the public that would like to know that it's here and have questions. So uh, can't stress enough. Yes. Please. I apologize. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? We have a lot of public out there. <coughs> so it's karaoke night tonight, Carrie. Get get up and close and personal. I just wanted to. Um, we're here tonight in connection with the Seven Sisters Youth Garden proposition and um, I want to thank the city for their support so far and encouragement and we all want to 
Will, everybody joins with me in that. And we also, um, um, if there's any questions. <laughs> If there are any questions, I would be happy to answer them. Council? When we get to the agenda item, I'll have some questions. Oh, okay. I appreciate you um, doing the rendition of the map and putting that effort in. Okay. So, so when the resolution comes up, then you have questions for me. Yes. Ma'am, Thank you. Test one, two. Test one, two. Can you give us your name and address, please? <laughs> she did. <laughs> Sir, can you come back? <laughs> we need your name and address. <laughs> um, my, my boss says I'm not supposed to give that. So <laughs> I refer to Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. It's <laughs> Carl. Anyone else from the public? Funny. All right. Um, Tracy had sent me a text. Uh, he'll be in about 7.35, so we'll keep a watch uh, on the time here, and when he joins us, we'll, uh, we'll circle back around to him. Okay. So if I can get a motion to approve personnel actions A through H. I make a motion to approve personnel actions A through H. Second. Discussion? Uh, Owen. Go ahead. Oh, I thought somebody else had a question. The longevity incre increase uh, for Chris, <coughs> is she still on, is she on part-time now or is she still on full-time? So. I guess I just had a question in my mind. I would say she is technically full time, working in a part time capacity, using up her leave. Okay, thank you. So get the appointment. Right. So as we're working to try to get her um, permanent <coughs> replacement here, uh, she's agreed while she's on leave uh, to come in and give us a few hours a week to make sure the plunge keeps okay. keeps running. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> the motion passes. Um, can I get a motion for the second reading on Ordinance 1259? Make a motion to approve the second reading of Ordinance 1259, an amendment uh, to the final bond schedule. Second. second. Discussion? Ariel, would you call the roll, please? Okay. Travis Orbeck? Yes. Larry Pratt? Yes. Gary Telkamp? Yes. Linda Barbell? Yes. Hal Glendale? Yes. J.R. Huddleston? Yes. Deborah Johnson? Yes. Bill Lucas? Yes. The motion passes. On to our resolutions. Can I get a, resolu or a motion for resolution 2024-13, a resolution to surplus city property? I make a motion to surplus 2024-13, a resolution to surplus city property, highways, streets, and roadways department 2002, John Deere 624-H six, wheel loader. Second. Discussion? Bob, is there anything you'd like to add to this? What's that? Is there anything you'd like to add to this? It's being surplus to trade it in on a on new loader. So we had to do that formally, surplus it. And it's a loader that's out of commission. Yeah. Uh, and there's an agenda item for the purchase of that new loader yet in front of council yep. tonight. All right, thank you. Anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> Going to get a motion for resolution 2024-14, a resolution declaring support for the creation of a youth community garden. Make a motion to approve 2024-14, a resolution declaring support for the creation of a youth community garden. Second. Second. Discussion. 
I just, do you have a lot of support <coughs> from the youth of the community? Everybody has been very positive about it, everybody I've spoken to. Um, it's a work in progress. But there's, um, I've spoken to um, youth groups belonging to churches and homeschoolers and the 4-H. Um, so, and then other organizations in town, the Boys and Girls Club, and um, I guess there's, I haven't been able to get a hold of the Boy Scouts yet. Okay. Thank you. Are these people that are with you tonight, are they part of the community garden or otherwise? Yes. Can I um, introduce the board? Of oh. The oh, okay. Uh, our chairman is, is Tom Fisk. Can I stand up? <laughs> <laughs> this is our chairman, Tom Fisk. And our secretary, Marianne Mona. These are our board members, and the other members are our gardeners and all our students. Nancy, Turner, Aspen, and Camille. There's one more. Welcome. Marla is Michael. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Assistant brainstormer. <laughs> <laughs> Have you read the um, resolution of support in the packet? Yes. And you folks are on board with it? Yes. All right. I'd like to thank you for the drawing, <coughs> recognizing that, you know, council. Uh, Felt it was important to actually visualize what it is, uh, you know, that you folks are proposing. Um, we were concerned. I've been concerned that it, it matches, um, not matches. Um, it's up to the standard of the library that's already up there, and this is certainly um, quite an ambitious layout. It would be exciting to see that up by the library. Um, can you help me understand how? You're going to keep the dinosaur inside the fence because it's my understanding the, the fence is a little shorter. <coughs> we had talked about it being taller. It would probably be petrified. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, I'd just like to um, support you because based on your job at the community garden and how that has turned into such a positive and fulfilling and it's a wonderful space. And it's completely, I think you've got all the beds now built and they're 100% in use. And I'm thinking there's going to be more demand than what we have room for um, going forward. And um, you've done a beautiful job there. So you've kind of proven yourself in my eye. Thank you very much for that. Um, I have to say it's a community effort. It's been a huge community effort for all the gardeners and those who have participated in building that garden. Um, everyone is appreciated. Well, it was a wonderful use of a empty spot. And this is another empty spot that could use beautification as well as an educational aspect to it. So um, we can't promote having our kids get their hands dirty enough because they aren't doing it in, like they used to. <laughs> Well, the principle or the vision behind that youth garden is that if a child learns to grow their food, or perhaps when they're young, it's a skill that will stay with them their whole life. They may not always have that opportunity to do it, but if they can, then they'll be able to. Um, I guess that's the vision, the ultimate vision for that garden. You've mentioned that uh, as a group you folks feel that the resolution is a good resolution. Um, you know, the reason behind it, as I understand, is it's important uh, for you to have a commitment from the city that you have land available as you go out and seek your grants. Uh, do you feel like this will put you in a good position? Yes. Uh, in, in what your uh, grant, you know, folks are asking for? Definitely. Definitely. Okay. 
Perry, I'd like to say you're doing a great job. Really appreciate it. Thank you. I was raised on a farm back in Oklahoma, and I hated having to put the garden every year, except for going in the water to put the um, <clears throat> get the water out of it. But yeah, you're right. That's a skill that kids are going to have the rest of their life. Um, I know that <clears throat> my dad taught me how to to plant a garden, to hold the champagne, go shop, and told me to sh showed me the value of, it, especially in winter time when we canned our own food. So you know, traditions are being lost. This is a good way to bring a lot of family traditions back. Thank you. Anyone else? Do you have anything else for for the council? Thank right. you for what you're doing. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right. Ariel, would you call the roll, please? Devin Johnson? Yes. Bill Lucas? Yes. Travis Orbach? Yes. Larry Pratt? Yes. Gary Telkin? Yes. Linda Marvell? Yes. Hal Glenville? Yes. J.R. Huddleston? Yes. Motion passes. Congratulations. <clears throat> All right, let's move on to our new business. Before we do new business, Mayor, can I bring to your attention our raffle on is uh, listed as item I. My last one was it? Yeah. Well, that's because I added it to personnel. Uh, and when you look at personnel, we add H, so then you go to I. Yeah. I yeah. see. That's not the case. No. So when you move it over to new business, rather than item. item I, it would be item G. It's correct. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank We're you for pausing together. the meeting to point that out. Only here to support you, boss. I before E, except after C. That's right. All right. I don't matter. So are we ready to move on? I'm ready if you are. Okay. <laughs> On a new business. Can I get a motion to approve new business item A, uh, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the security assessment agreement with Dakota State University. Make a motion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the security assessment agreement with Dakota State University to participate in the project boundary fence cybersecurity assessment at no cost to the city. Second. Discussion. So, Bob will count on you to keep me honest here. Uh, Governor Noem has uh, gotten the legislature, legislature to approve some financing to go out and have Dakota State University uh, do a, uh, an assessment uh, of our infrastructure uh, and all of our software and hardware within the city to make sure that it can't be penetrated. Uh, the whole world knows that uh, there's just a lot of bad stuff going on out there. Uh, and as a community, we need to make sure that we're doing everything that we can to uh, protect um, uh, all the information that we have. Um, so this is uh, to enter into that uh, agreement with Dakota State University to come out and do an assessment. They'll be working with Black Hills Technology. Uh, and they'll take a look at uh, all of our systems, all of the computers throughout the city. Uh, and let us know um, if there's any any improvement, any improvements, any hardware that needs to be upgraded. Then uh, they'll help us understand what that is. It's accurate. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, any other questions after knowing that? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> Can I get a motion to approve new business item B, approve and authorize the mayor to sign the contract for sale of personal property at online only auction. I'll make a motion to approve and authorize the mayor to sign the contract for sale of personal property at online only auction with Brady and Real Estate and Auctions Inc. Commission fields, commission fees are 15% of items selling for less than $1,000 and 10% on items over $1,000. Other fees include advertising, credit card fees, and high bid software fees of 2.75%.
online auction is scheduled for September 27th <coughs> through October 1st, and pickup will be October 3rd. Second. Discussion? So this is approving the contract only. Uh, Council, if you remember, uh, each year when we do this and we have um, equipment that we're gonna surplus, there will be a list of the equipment that's put in front of you for your approval for this auction. So you'll know what it is that the city is proposing to uh, auction before we actually get into it. So you'll have that opportunity. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. On to new business item C. Going to get a motion to approve and authorize the city administrator to sign the purchase agreement for a new 2023 John Deere 544P wheel loader. Make a motion to approve and authorize the city administrator to sign the purchase agreement for a new 2023 John Deere 544P wheel loader for $258,451 from RDO Equipment Company to be paid for by a future supplemental appropriation from the general fund unassigned fund balance. Second. Second. Discussion. <clears throat> So this has been talked about at Public Works. Public Works is uh, recommending uh, the purchase of this. Uh, Bob, if you could update the council just a little bit more. Initially, the desire was to lease this piece of equipment, but when interest rates came back at 7.5%, uh, it made more sense to purchase the lower, considering we had cash available for purchase. Um, <coughs> This loader is essential for operations that the city public works does, and so it's important that we replace it as soon as possible. And Bob, the uh, current one we have is a part of the trade-in, yep. bringing it to this to current dollar amount. Correct. Thank you. And it is a government contract. If you look at the first page, you'll notice there's a source well contract number and the discount that's applied to governments. Thank you. So if council approves this motion, uh, when do you think the city might see it? When it might be available? Uh, four to six weeks. So we're, we're optimistic, yeah. Mid-September, maybe. Anyone else? No, October. Okay. You're good? No. Nope. Yep, I'm good. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Can I get a motion to approve new business item D, approve a contract change order number one with Atlas Exteriors. Make a motion to approve contract change order number one with Atlas Exteriors, LLC, 2023 Mueller Center lobby roof and skylight replacement project adding $18,525 for added metal flashing and to improve structural integrity and increase the height of the skylight framework for moisture protection. Original amount of $135,500. New amount is $154,025. Second. Discussion? <coughs> um, so, Tracy's... Um, requesting this change order. Is there anything you can offer, Bob? Or would we wait till I know Trace that give us an update? there were areas of the roof that had to be raised in order to get water to drain. So ultimately the skylight is about six or eight inches higher than it was before. Um, I, this change order actually was discussed prior to me even starting. So I don't know why it took that long to get to you folks, but I know it's being closed out. He's they're done and it's no leaks. Okay. So is the the amount of the change order, is that covered by any of the insurance claim or is this out of our pocket? I don't recall the insurance amount. We're going to submit the change order and see if we can get some more. Okay. So. Thanks. Yeah, insurance will supplement. So should. So it's should actually the roof that's coming up? Not the skylight itself? 
Or are they both coming up? Both, both went. But as a combined roof coming up? Yeah. Okay. Based on the structure of the skylight itself, <clears throat> the shape of it, there was only like this much. And so when your water, your roof is flat, that will pull after a while by taking it up a little higher. Um, I don't know, what was it? A um, couple of two befores and then going ahead and restructuring the whole, uh, the whole dome that keeps your water from splashing up over your flashing and going into the building itself. I know that doesn't sound like much, but it is a big, it is a big change. Does that answer your question, Deborah? Yes, I was going to ask about the insurance. <clears throat> and the, the glass does look, to me, it looks different. Like it might be a little stronger for hail. Um, <coughs> Anti-hail. <laughs> as much as we can have it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Hoping that it does anyway. It's been a while since we looked at these estimates from that last hailstorm. Uh, but the insurer gave us two costs. Uh, and the second cost was actual replacement. Uh, cost, uh, whatever those may be. Um. All right, anyone else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And I get a motion to approve new business item E, approve the city to pay for <coughs> camping accommodations for AmeriCorps group. I make a motion to approve the city to pay for camping accommodations for AmeriCorps group in the amount of $792 to be paid from the 212 additional sales tax fund, Fall River Channel Repairs, 212-21200-42570. Second. Discussion? Which campgrounds are they going to be at? Cottonwood and oh. Coldbrook. They're going to do half and half. Okay. Is that the band of kids I saw this morning in the park? No, they get here the 12th. All right. So if you could just update Council Bob uh, a little <coughs> bit on what you've been doing to get these folks here. So the, there's eight volunteers part of the organization. Um, they'll arrive on the 12th. And they will be here for four weeks, four and a half weeks, something like that. Um, their focus is going to be um, clean up in the, the river from Jennings to Minicata. Um, they have some other um, things that they can do to buildings, painting and things, if the weather gets inclement, so that we don't just lose them. They can do other jobs in the city. Um, they've also offered to help with the Hot Air Balloon Festival if they're at a point where they're caught up with their work. What resources will the city provide for them? What's that? What resources will we provide for them, the city provide for them? The camping and then tools that they may need that they don't bring. Um, our staff is going to haul the debris away for them. Um, okay. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> this, this one's near and dear to my heart. A um, number of years ago, uh, the city got down in and uh, cleaned out the river. Um, we took some flack for that, uh, but I think it's, it's paying off. Um, it was shortly after we had done that originally that for the first time in a long time, um, you could hear kids and families playing in the river and laughing, and that hadn't happened in a long time. Uh, so at least we're, we're getting our river back. Um, my wife will confirm that I, I'm not a gardener. I don't have a green thumb. I know what grass looks like. And if it's not grass, it gets weed-eated. Um, but cleaning up the river uh, is a huge thing. I didn't realize that when it comes to cattails, if you don't get the bulbs, they're coming right back. Uh, and that's what we've seen with the cattails. Uh, we've also seen that some of the dirt that we hauled in there had weeds in it. Uh, and I, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't argue against that. Uh, it probably looks as bad now in its own way as it did when we had the cattails in there. Uh, but we haven't given up on the uh, the idea of getting it cleaned up. Uh, so I appreciate uh, Bob working with AmeriCorps. Uh, our previous city administrator um, started the conversation with AmeriCorps to get them in here. 
Yeah. So to have them in there uh, in the early uh, month of August, prior to our balloon festival, um, I hope people have good memories of when the balloons came into town for their night glow and they were actually down in the river. Uh, and those balloons are awful impressive uh, when they're doing their twinkles at night. Um, so we've been working with the contractor as far as the suspended sidewalk, asking them to speed up a little bit and get some of that sidewalk finished from the Jennings Bridge to at least the uh, pedestrian bridge in front of City Hall. Uh, they got some, uh, a test section of the concrete poured today uh, on the sidewalk itself. Uh, so we're asking them to have that section at least done so that people can actually be standing on the sidewalk, uh, utilizing it, seeing what it's, uh, what it's intended to be, and have our balloons uh, for the night glow down in the river. Uh, and having these American folks here to clean up the river and getting looking uh, much, much better again is, uh, is something huge. Oh, uh, thank you for working with them, uh, getting them in here. Thank you, Council, for approving the, uh, the funding for them to camp. Uh, for $792, uh, we're going to get a heck of a lot more in return from uh, free labor for doing that. So, uh, this is a good deal for the city. So, any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you for that. And our last new business item, and then we'll get to you, Tracy. Uh, actually, it's not. We've got two other quick ones, and then we'll get to you. Uh, new business item F. Can I get a motion to reappoint Mary Kay Thompson and Gary Merkel to the library board? I make a motion to reappoint Mary Kay Thompson and Gary Merkel to the library board for three-year terms, 7-2024 to 7-2027. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And our last new business item, G? Yes, sir. A motion to approve uh, a poker run on August 17th from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, at the American Legion, uh, selling 50-50 raffle tickets for Toys for Kids fundraiser. Make a motion to approve. Uh, Empowerment Coalition to conduct to conduct a 50-50 raffle August 17th from 10 to 4 for toys for kids uh, through the American Legion program. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. All right. Tracy, we'll jump back up to you. So we have a council update from our public works engineer. Well, good evening. And let's see, is this on? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, well, the hot weather has uh, maybe not been the most comfortable, but it certainly has not really hindered uh, progress on the project. Uh, a lot of concrete has been placed in the last uh, month. And um, I think we're very close to seeing um, more of North River Street uh, being opened. So uh, we'll know a little bit more at our uh, contractor meeting tomorrow, but uh, definitely getting much closer. Um, as Bob was mentioning, the suspended sidewalk uh, test section of the lightweight concrete was poured today. So that's an exciting development to be on the cusp of uh, actually having some of the finished product be ready and yes the goal is to have that uh, hopefully that section from Minicotta, uh to the city hall pedestrian bridge uh, open uh, in time for the balloon festival so that's uh, definitely exciting um, as far as the road project and more of the details uh, where we're at with it uh, we're on the final stretch of, well, actually the final stretch of the road itself, but also the final stretch of the utilities, which is uh, very nice. Uh, we have, uh, all we have left is the water main, uh, which some of it's already been placed on uh, Battle Mountain Avenue. Uh, tomorrow, uh, you, well, as far as I know, it's going to happen tomorrow. Uh, North River Street will be closed um, 
past the intersection there by the plunge. Uh, there's a uh, old fire hydrant that we're taking out and come to find out that uh, it wraps around and is connected to the water main on uh, North River Street, not on Battle Mountain as it appears that it would be. So uh, in order to properly uh, discontinue that line, uh, it's essential that the old pipe not just be stubbed off and left live for uh, future problems. So a little interruption in traffic, but it's not the main flow of traffic, it's only um, as you go towards the plunge. So you may see that tomorrow if you're in that vicinity. It should really just be about a one-day project. Um, and other than that, utilities, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's the final stretch. So within the next probably two weeks or so, um, water main will be in. And that will be the conclusion of the utility. So it's been a very long project, a very busy project, a lot of surprises, but uh, the, the end is, is very near. Um, another topic uh, that uh, Mayor Bob wanted me to uh, uh, give you some uh, information about is uh, in the budget process, there's discussion about the need for uh, boring out or cleaning out the culverts that are under the 6th Street uh, low water crossing, also known more commonly as a dip bridge. We also have another uh, somewhat low water crossing. It functions somewhat the same way over on Joplin Avenue. The culverts over here on the 6th Street bridge are, I would say, probably 75 to 80 percent full of uh, mineral deposit. I mean, they're just, they're that full. Uh, if you actually stop and look and take a look over the side, there's only about maybe two or three inches of free space uh, that's left just with the, with the river's normal flow uh, to go through those culverts. So if you've noticed in recent years, whenever there's much of any type of a thunderstorm at all, they have to close, you know, we have flooding on this uh, crossing up here. That problem, of course, if left untouched, uh, probably will not be very, very many years, maybe not long at all, before just the normal flow of the river, part of it will probably go over, go over the bridge. So that is a, um, that's the reason that we're talking about this. Uh, the Joplin Avenue Bridge is constructed in a similar manner. It's much smaller, and a lot of people don't even realize it's there. Uh, it does have the same situation developing. So not as severe, um, and if we look at going, you know, we're looking at a potential uh, bid opening uh, later this fall for a winter project. Um, we will have the option of doing only the Sixth Street Bridge or both the bridges, and I'm also going to be adding an option to line the culverts um, with a like a poly uh, polyethylene type of a liner that may prevent that same buildup from happening again. So uh, uh, that was just something I wanted to uh, give a heads up on. Uh, it's, I feel it's a very important project because the functionality of that low water crossing bridge uh, is very compromised even at this point and will probably cease to function correctly in the not so distant future. Uh, so I uh, wanted to give you an update on that. I think that's pretty much what I have. So, uh, any questions? I have one. When when they're working on the fire hydrant at the intersection of Battle Mountain Avenue and um, River Street, are is there still going to be access to the Summit um, Detour, Summit Avenue Detour? Oh, uh, if you go around the Colebrook Circle. Okay. I also think that. Well, there's some temporary access through the gas station right now too. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't count on that. Yeah. But well, I mean, if you were if you were coming from the north of the plunge, you could still go up Summit, right? Yes. Oh, okay. yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's only a small. It's just one ditch. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's my access okay. point. Anyone else? Thank you, Tracy. With the um, culvert um, boring, 
we will probably see a drop in the river level? You will only see a drop in the immediate backwater from the 6th Street crossing over here. It will return to whatever it was, you know, when they first put it in. But of course that's taken, well that bridge was put in 1954, so gradually over time. Um, I don't think it's going to be detrimental in the sense that it's going to really look ugly, but it, it will definitely drop a little bit. Yeah, close to the bridge there, it, it will be it will be a little bit lower because of the fact it's not backing it up so much. Yeah, yeah the river's going to flow the same. I mean, it's not, not less water, but yeah. uh, it will appear a little bit lower in there just mm -hmm. to go back to the way it was built okay. in the first place. But that way, if we get a two-inch rain, we're probably not going to have um, the water overtopping that. It'll be the exceptional rains that actually put the water over the top of it. Will you still leave the grass catcher on the dip bridge to catch the debris? More than likely. Okay. Yeah. Although it may not be as critical because they'll be smooth and they'll be large. But that's also somewhat to prevent... Uh, uh, People. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Kids from thinking that that's a great water slide. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Thank you. All right, on to our, <coughs> on to our committee reports. Uh, administrative and finance, JR. Admin finance did not have a meeting in July. However, our next meeting will be on August 12th at 1 p.m. here at the Mueller Civic Center. All are invited. Thank you. Airport Advisory, Gary. The Airport Advisory Committee will meet on Thursday, this Thursday, August 8th at 8.30 a.m. Thank you. Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management, Travis. The Custer Fall River Regional Waste Management District Board will meet uh, Thursday, September 12th at seven o'clock here at the Mueller Center. Thank you. Historic Preservation, Deborah. Uh, due to there being no issues pending, um, this month's meeting has been canceled. So we will uh, meet September 4th, 5 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Thank you. Evans Plunge, Linda. We will meet August 8th um, on Thursday at noon at the Evans Plunge Mineral Springs. Thank you. Parks, Recreation, Beautification, Larry, Linda, Linda. Next meeting will be this Wednesday, August the 7th, 2 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Everyone is invited. Thank you. Planning and Zoning, Deborah. There was not a quorum at the last meeting, so I have no report. Um, our next meeting will be uh, August 21st, 6 p.m. at City Hall. Thank you. Public Safety, Bill, JR. Public Safety will meet this Thursday, August 8th, 2 p.m. at the Mueller Center Conference Room. Thank you. Public Works, Bill, Al. And so much for the clean sweep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Public Works met on Tuesday, July 23rd, 1 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Members present were Deborah Johnston, myself, Mayor Nelson, City Administrator Bob Nelson Jr., Public Works Engineer Tracy Bastion, and Jim Jones from AE2S. There were no members of the public present and therefore no communications from the public. Uh, the agenda was amended to include a report on KLJ's progress on the historic stairways. Uh, for old business, um, we talked about the uh, replacement of the 2002 wheel loader, which you approved tonight. Uh, we also discussed Valley View drainage. Uh, the improvements improvements have been made uh, by the street department. Uh, there's been no feedback re uh, from residents regarding a potential assessment district. Uh, this item will remain on the inactive projects list. 
Uh, we reviewed the active and inactive projects list to determine what items uh, may be accomplished in 2024 and what items may be included on the 2025 budget request. And that has been updated on the projects list. The committee discussed the merits of membership in uh, the Western Dakota Regional Water Systems Organization. Flow tests of the Evans pumping station uh, as part of updating the uh, water master plan will provide data to help with this decision and will likely be available in time for a membership decision if we are able to accomplish that in the next couple of months. If the city uh, did decide to become a member and it was later determined that it's unnecessary, it would be possible to exit the agreement. Under new business, a Zoom call presentation was made by ServeLine, a service of HomeServe, which is an insurance that covers excessive water bills due to leaks, which are the responsibility of the property owner. ServeLine representatives provided details of the program and answered questions from the members. The program would include all residential customers and require that those that did not want the service to opt out. Because of this feature, the committee does not recommend participation in the offered service. Second item of new business, the committee reviewed proposals from West Plains Engineering Inc. to provide engineering services for the design of standby generators at the wastewater treatment facility and Hot Brook pumping station. Both of these items are recommended by actions in the county pre-disaster mitigation plan. The engineering design is required in order to purchase and uh, to obtain purchase and construction grants for the project. The cost of the Hot Brook Station design is $11,250, which would likely be paid from the 212 fund with a supplemental appropriation. The cost of the wastewater treatment design is $9,750 and could likely be paid with a supplemental appropriation uh, from the 604 cash balance. The committee recommends accepting the quotes and seeks council approval for uh, at the next regular meeting uh, to pursue these um, engineering designs. The committee reviewed and recommends council approve the uh, 2024 repair plan at the next council meeting, which would include uh, repair and patch uh, this is on the road uh, repair, repair and patch on Meadowlark Drive, an overlay of Summit Road uh, to Elm Street, and Albany Avenue from 5th to 6th, and this would cost us $88,798, which is $6,563 above the $82,235 included in the 2024 budget. The committee reviewed the details of Amendment 2 of the Water Plan Update provided by AE2S and recommends the Council approve at the next regular Council meeting. The $18,000 fee for this amendment and associated contractor costs would likely be paid for from the 602 cash balance. The AE2S proposal designs the piping layout for the Evanswell pumping station, pumping test. It coordinates with the South Dakota uh, DANR and the city to prepare a temporary discharge permit. Coordinates the Evanswell pumping test, including all contractor coordination. The city will be responsible for the contractor costs. This test is necessary to update the city of Hot Springs water master plan and gets any projects on the state water plan for grant funding. The committee reviewed and concurs with the recommendation to utilize trim it up tree removal for flood channel tree removal. Phase one of the Fall River tree cleanup near Evans Plunge, which involves the south bank of the Fall River from Battle Mountain Bridge to Coldbrook Avenue. Uh, the work involved would be to remove all trees and brush into accessible 
piles for the city to remove and clearing, cleaning up the large trees behind Evans Plunge. The total cost is $20,000. Additional companies have been showing the work uh, with no interest or quotes submitted. This included American Tree Service and Tree Wise Guys. The cost of this work is part of the 2024 flood channel repair and cleanup and is in the 212 budget. Uh, the, the work addresses items on the Army Corps of Engineers flood channel inspection 2023 report. Uh, the committee discussed and agrees with the recommendation to use AmeriCorps group uh, to clean the flood channel and you uh, approved that, uh, the recommendation to cover their uh, accommodations tonight. Uh, the committee discussed and agrees with the proposal to hire extreme foundation repair and concrete lifting to repair the flagpole patio, light pole bases, playground, back patio, and sidewalks around the library. The estimated cost of this is $9,674, which comes out of the 2024 budgeted funds from the library. The committee discussed a complaint regarding signs at the golf course warning of the penalty for public urination and the observation of that practice occurring at other city parks where there, were, where, are, where there are no such signs. The complaint was not, the complainant was not present to discuss their concerns, no change in the sign wording or additional signs at other locations is recommended at this time. The committee heard a report regarding the progress KLJ is making on the historic stairway design. 60% drawings have been completed, which include demolition and the elevations, along with landings, tread rise and run, and handrail designs. An engineering-based cost estimate will be issued shortly, which will enable the grant application process to start. Um, Tracy talked about the, uh, the bid package for the culvert boring and there were no other departmental updates. We adjourned at 3.10 p.m. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, August 27th, 1 p.m. here at the Mueller Center. Hal, is there anything you'd like to add? No, the membership you're talking about, is that for the pipeline coming from the eastern part of the state? Yes. Okay. And do we have copies of the drawing? Yes. Okay. That's it for me. So is that, is that speculative? Pardon? I was just, in general, that uh, what you guys are talking about, joining that, is that that's what that, that's uh, West Dakota? Yeah. West, yeah. Isn't that kind of speculative? Yes. Very. So what's the benefit? Like, is there a, is the it more pro than con? If we join now, and if it becomes a reality, and if we need the water, we'll get it at a much reduced rate than if we wait it in 20 or 30 years and say, oh, we need it. And we'd be a voting member. And we'd be a voting member and a decision maker. But it's a 20 year down the road type of before anything water would yeah. be seen. But we'd be paying them money? If we are members, it's about $1,500 a year. So they're just accumulating that money and hopefully this thing will manifest itself? Yeah. At $1,500 a year, 20 years down the road, it still wouldn't pay to bring the water here. It just it gets us a seat at the table, uh, and Bill was talking about this uh, uh, Evans Pumping Station study. Uh, that's why that's so important to get that done and see where the city's at as far as uh, additional production. Uh, if you remember, a couple meetings ago, um, Tracy updated everyone on our distribution system, and we're fine there. Uh, we can get water where it needs to be. We just now need to confirm that we have water to get where it needs to be. That's the next crucial step in all of this, is to assess how much extra pumping capacity we have from the Evans pumping station. And that's what the water test, or the test at the Evans pumping station does, is it gives us a really solid data point to help us make the decision, no, we don't need to be a part of this organization, or 
yes we do as opposed to opinions and this also this study um, for the pumping station also will tell us about being able to or get us into grant process for a large um, Cistern, I guess you'd call it. Yeah, up, it, up it, above the golf course yeah, to feed uh, to that build side another, of town, a storage yeah. unit. We've got to have. We can't apply for a grant to say we want to build another tank and build a supply line until we can prove that that pumping station can actually provide water to that. So there's a lot, a, a lot hangs in the balance regarding the, the results of this pumping test that is not cheap. Anyone else? Thank you. Uh, Southern Hills Golf Course will be meeting next Monday, 6 o'clock at the um, clubhouse. Bob, anything from the city administrator report? Uh, property maintenance code letters and nuisance violation letters were received by the residents Friday. I've received lots of calls. I would recommend that they reach out to me and communicate and I'll help them get to where it needs to be. That's all I have. All right. Ariel, do you have anything from finance? All right, um, I have a number of things here I'd like to talk with you about. The first one, uh, <coughs> Council, I wanna thank you, Bob, uh, Misty, Ariel, all the department heads for uh, all the work that went into uh, our two budget meetings last week. Uh, for the public, uh, Council still has one more uh, scheduled um, Budget meeting that will be August 15th, four o'clock, uh, down here at the Mueller Center. Uh, they're open meetings, so uh, if the public wants to attend, they're welcome to do that. Uh, but um, we have not finalized a budget yet. Uh, we still have uh, more discussion uh, on that. Then I want to respond to a couple articles that were in the July 25th. Uh, local newspaper, the Herald Star. Uh, first one was related to uh, Carl Hall and Mary Smith. Council, if you remember, they addressed you uh, about the uh, impact that the road reconstruction has had on businesses in town uh, and was asking the council for uh, some reimbursement, um, some waiving of property taxes, uh, those types of things. Carl had spoken to it uh, when he was talking with you and had mentioned that uh, these are questions that uh, the businesses have already put to the state uh, and DOT has told them that there isn't any resources uh, the Department of Transportation has available for that. Um, Bob had reached out to the Federal Highway folks to see if there was anything they had available. There, there isn't. Uh, I had uh, mentioned to Carl that I would do some follow-up, see if there's anything else that we might have missed. Um, so I contacted the Department of Legislative Aud Audit uh, for the state of South Dakota. The Department of Legislative Audit, um, their mission statement, to serve the legislature, legislators and taxpayers of the state of South Dakota by providing quality independent audits and assistance to enhance public accountability improve reporting capability and strengthen operational controls of state and local government. Um, anybody that's been involved with uh, council for any length of time knows that when we've gone to the different South Dakota Municipal League training, uh, the Department of Legislative Audit is always one of the um, departments that makes a presentation and helps uh, council members understand what our responsibilities are as far as South Dakota codified law is. Um, I spoke with the Director of Local Government Assistance uh, asking specifically, is there something we have missed? Is there something the businesses have missed uh, in um, assistance that might be available? Uh, and he confirmed what we have been hearing uh, all along is that uh, when it comes to 
using taxpayer dollars to reimburse private enterprise or private individuals. That's just not something that we can do. Codified law doesn't allow that. So as a council, we're very much hamstrung in what we can do to help out. Um, there have been a number of times since I've been involved with city government that somebody has approached the council and says, well, can't the city do this from a financial standpoint? And it has to do with assisting uh, private monies with, or public monies with private uh, practices. Uh, and we're just not able to do that. In our heart, we might want to be able to, but there isn't anything that allows us to do that. Uh, so I just wanted to get that out there that uh, it, for the public, for the businesses, if there's something you feel we're missing, let us know. We'll certainly see if there's something we can do. But we've been asking this question ever since the road reconstruction started. Uh, and I understand it's disappointing for folks who have been significantly impacted by this, but there isn't anything that um, the city or the state is able to do to help them out with that. Uh, I regret that's the case, but but it is. Um, oh, that's that. The other thing that I'd like to speak to is a letter to the editor. Um, and I'll just read it and then respond as we go along, or as I go along. Uh, back in 2021, the city moved to demolish one of the oldest sandstone buildings in town, the West Oak Building, at a price of over $175,000. That's reasonably accurate. I don't remember the exact cost, but uh, when I talk about it, I remember that it's being around $175,000. One of the justifications for this action was that we would save the stone and then save over $70,000 on the stonework to be, be performed on the overhanging sidewalk. Demolition of that building, um, it was never discussed because we had never thought about it at the time that by demolishing that building and using the sandstone, we would save $70,000. Council, you remember that was never a part of the discussion. Uh, so it's unfortunate that um, facts are getting mushed and misinterpreted, or misinterpreted, um, inaccurately interpreted. Uh, but I think it's important that the public knows that there was never the, the um, saving $70,000 by being able to reuse that stone was never a part of the discussion. It was always uh, a life safety issue. Uh, what I remember us talking about was that the, the engineer said that that building was at imminent risk of catastrophic failure. And that's exactly happened. Uh, what happened with the building. We knew we wanted to save the stone. Uh, at the time, we didn't know what we were going to use it for, but we wanted to save it. Uh, but it's inaccurate to suggest that one of the reasons for tearing that building down was because we could save $70,000 by repurposing the stone elsewhere. So I think it's important for the public to know that. The overhanging sidewalk, sidewalk project is way over budget. That's accurate. Uh, and... Uh, it's, it's a frustration for the city, but it happened because um, COVID hit the world and it went crazy. The original estimate uh, for the construction of that sidewalk was $2.8 million. Um, the governor, uh, Governor Nome had worked with the city to do a swap of University Avenue. Uh, we would take that over uh, for response, uh, as maintenance responsibility. Uh, and in exchange for that, uh, Governor Nome gave us $2.8 million. Looking at the original construction costs, uh, the sidewalk was gonna come in right about $2.8 million. So we thought it was gonna be a wash. Uh, then COVID hit. The uh, construction of the sidewalk came in at uh, $3.9 million. So the fact that it's over budget, absolutely. Here's the one that I really have a problem with. The stone being used is not from the West Oak building. Um, it is not even in fact from South Dakota and it is not even full stone. What happened? Did we save $70,000? Truth for a change. So I find truth for a change uh, is seldom truthful uh, when he represents that uh, what he wants is truth for a change. All he's ever gotten from the city of Hot Springs is the truth. Uh, he's unwilling to listen to the truth, and it's mostly don't confuse me with the facts. Um, but the stone that's being used, uh, I suspect that the individual saw that uh, down by the Jennings Bridge, there's a mock-up uh, of uh, stone that is gonna go around each of the towers. 
and absolutely correct that that stone, I don't know where it's from, don't care where it's from. Uh, it's the, uh, the stone that the engineer uh, designed to go around those towers. Uh, and if you've taken a look at it, uh, it's really gonna make those towers pop. It's, it's gonna be beautiful. Oh, the stone uh, that the individual is thinking uh, was supposed to be evidently cut up and put around those towers. There would, never would have been enough stone to do that to begin with. So after, uh, not after, as we got into discussions uh, about the, the design of the sidewalk, uh, again, and this was after the West Oak building had been demolished, it was after, I can't stress enough. Um, the, the architect had originally designed um, some large manufactured uh, blocks to go in between each of the towers. That would provide some additional protection for car, cars that might go over the curb or whatever. They wouldn't be able to get to the sidewalk itself. So we're gonna put some uh, large stones in there. There was 26 of those stones. Uh, and the original estimate for those 26 stones that would be in between the towers, not wrapped around the towers, in between the towers, for those 26 stones was $75,000. So I suspect that's where the confusion uh, and this individual thinking uh, what was gonna happen with those. Um, when we got to looking at that, we said, uh, our former, one of our former city administrators said, you know what? Why don't we actually use the stone that comes from the West Oak building? Those large stones. And some of the other large stones that uh, have been retrieved from uh, other buildings in the city of Hot Springs that have come down. Why don't we go ahead and put those historic stones in between those towers and we can bring a hundred years of history of hot springs uh, and combine it with our future going forward. We've got our past, we've got our future going forward uh, and we'll put those in place and we'll save $75,000. So that was the decision that was made uh, but I just think it's important in this particular case uh, that the, the public know the full truth because the truth that uh, was in the letters to the editor is completely misrepresented and totally inaccurate uh, in the representation that's being made. And uh, I just wanted council to know that and I wanted it to be on the public record uh, that uh, that's, <clears throat> that's how we got where we're at. So, Thank you, you Mayor. questions for me? Thank you, Mayor. So that's all I have. So if you don't have any other questions, uh, that would bring us to our executive session. So if I could get a motion to go into executive session. Make a motion to go into executive session in accordance with South Dakota codified law 1-25-23 legal. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. There'll be a brief uh, pause before we get into executive session and there will be no action the council will take when we come out of executive session. Uh, I mentioned before they can be chatty sometimes. This particular topic might uh, have them be a little more chatty than they normally are so I don't know when we're going to be back out folks. Thank We'll cheat a little bit, Ariel, if you could bring us back in at uh, 9.08. We left executive session at 9.07. Um, Going to get a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Have a good evening, everyone. Woof, woof. <laughs> oh. mm. What? We'll cheat a little bit, Ariel, if you could bring us back in at uh, 9.08. We left executive session at 9.07. Um, gonna get a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Have a good evening, everyone.